The documentary explores the authentic account of Scott Skurlock, a notorious bank robber who became infamous in Seattle during the 1990s for his audacious thefts. Skurlock, a highly intelligent and daring guy, developed a strong interest in illegal activities during his early years. Notwithstanding his intellect, he discontinued his college education and adopted a criminal lifestyle, influenced by the 1991 film Point Break Skurlock. Donning prosthetic makeup to obscure his identify, perpetrated a series of bank robberies, thereby gaining the moniker Hollywood from law enforcement authorities. Over a span of four years, he adeptly embezzled a total of more than $2 million by specifically focusing on bank vaults rather than cashiers. Skurlock's motivations were many. While he appropriated the pilfered funds for his own personal need, he also perceived himself as a modern-day Robin Hood, engaging in the equitable redistribution of wealth to individuals experiencing financial hardship. As the FBI escalated their probe, Skurlock's desperation heightened. He devised a last scheme to rob three banks in a single day, but the authorities successfully prevented him from carrying it out. Steve Myers and Mark Biggins, who were involved with Skurlock, were apprehended however Skurlock himself evaded capture. Confronted by law enforcement, he chose to end his own life in order to evade apprehension. Skurlock's narrative underscores the irresistible appeal of criminal activities, the intricacies of human behavior, and the repercussions of choosing a path that deviates from legal norms. Through interviews and archival footage, viewers gain insight into Skurlock's meticulous planning and charismatic persona. The documentary also explores the consequences of their actions, culminating in a shootout with police after a bank robbery that ultimately led to Scott Skurlock's death. Stephen Paul Myers and Mark John Biggins, accomplices in a bank robbery, were sentenced to 21 years and three months in federal prison, with an additional five years of supervised release. Biggins' parents' pleas for leniency and his lack of a significant criminal record resulted in a reduced sentence from the initial 24 years. During the sentencing hearing, Myers from New Orleans and Biggins from Oxnard, California, received identical sentences, including a mandatory 10-year term for using semi-automatic assault weapons during the confrontation with law enforcement. Both individuals had previously pleaded guilty to federal charges related to the robbery. The robbery, which occurred at Seafirst Bank's Lake City branch on November 27, resulted in an exchange of gunfire with police, injuring both Myers and Biggins. The stolen amount of $1.08 million was later recovered. Stephen Paul Myers was discharged from incarceration on December 6, 2013. Subsequently, he made the decision to live a more subdued existence, distancing himself from public attention. Myers, who resides in New Iberia, Louisiana, places great importance on his family and chooses to avoid public scrutiny, instead valuing precious moments spent with his loved ones. After completing his term without any problems, Myers contemplates the significant insights gained from his prior experiences in how to rob a bank. He acknowledges the harmful consequences of his criminal activities and emphasizes the significance of family relationships. He maintains his focus on embracing a new phase in his life. Mark John Biggins was discharged from a federal penitentiary on February 10, 2015. Similarly, he has made the decision to live a more secluded life, opting to avoid public attention and currently resides with his family in Olympia, Washington, according to Woman and Home. Although there is less information available regarding his activities after being released, his participation in the film How to Rob a Bank offered a glimpse into his feelings of regret and contemplation regarding his role in Skurlock's illicit endeavors.